Matteo, I don't know, I hope you know me, if you don't, whatever. I, they invited me uh, uh, speaking here, closing the conference. Did you like the conference? Yeah. So, um, first of all, one notice for everybody. When, when I finish, do not leave the room. There is some surprises and whatever afterwards. So, please do not leave the room, okay? So, I am Matteo, mm, and uh, I've been asked by my friend Fullo if I wanted to send out a proposal for, for, for a closing keynote for this year, last year, last summer. And, well, I, I was discussing, I was thinking between myself, and um, I thought, well, what can, what can I tell that, is, that can inspire the others? And, well, I, the, the thing that I can tell is how av others have inspired me. And I hope you like, you like my story. So, um, first of all, I disclaimer, okay? Somebody said, well, they, you have been invited to deliver a keynote, so you might be somebody that of, of any importance. I don't think so, but whatever. Um, anyway, I, I had to make uh, one note. I have only one superpower, okay? I have put in front of a computer when I was really, really young, okay? So it was, I was four years old in that picture, so the, the thing, okay? That was a Commodore or something, whatever. So, well, that was uh, my only superpower and my only privilege advantage. Thank you, parents. <laughs> uh, didn't have anything to do with that. Um, so, well, fast forward. Well, I did some, I went to college. Hey, University of Bologna, oldest university of the Western world. Wow, very nice Bologna, you should visit, okay? By the way, I never been there at the top because there is a thing that if you got the top, while uh, you haven't got, got your degree, you will never get your degree. So, never went, I don't know. Um, so, well, um, I graduated, and after that, I, I got a job in two weeks. Yay! Um, what I wanted to do is to build skyscrapers, okay? I wanted to build fantastic software systems. Very great, very scalable, very well-written, very oiled whatever, you can imagine our new grad, as a new grad, you wanted to go to uh, and make an impact in your work, okay? I ended up writing J2E <laughs> code, more or less. That was what I did, okay? So, I'm afraid to say I, I was not really a good employee, okay? Not, not by any chance. I've been coding for probably most of my life, but on the other side, I had no idea how to work, okay? And how to work with others. Nobody teaches you how to work with others, okay? So, well, I'm also, there is this other thing about, I don't know, I don't know if you probably have seen this picture before. Um, so, uh, what is what I know, and that's what I think other people know. Reality is not just like that, it's a little bit more like this. I don't know, you can guess. Um, I didn't felt very well at that point. I got into a little bit of depression. I didn't really know what to do with my life. So, um, well, I don't know. I need to, I want to change jobs. Hey, I want to do something great. I want to build skyscrapers. So I applied for the bigs. Imagine whatever big I applied to. I'm not naming or shaming, whatever. Um, I failed them all, okay? So I got into a little bit of, again, well, maybe I'm not fit for coding. I shouldn't be coding in my life. If this is coding, I don't want to do it. So I applied for an MBA. <laughs> yeah, okay, now, I failed that too. <laughs> On this one, I was really lucky. Imagine what could have happened. Um, also, my English it was very, very far from perfect, okay? I couldn't be doing this if my English was what it was back then. So, well, I, had, I made some contacts with people and started looking for a job and so on, and then I had the best idea 
idea ever. Like, I ask myself, should I get a PhD? That's the answer, <laughs> okay? But instead, what I did is this thing. So I enrolled again into university. So I, did, I started my PhD. Hey, fantastic, I finished it, okay? I, I have a PhD, whatever. Um, well, that's what happened, really. Uh, not because of the PhD, or because of the fact that I was also working to, to sustain myself during my PhD, but because of bad accounting. Okay, so whatever you do in your life, get a top-notch accountant. All that money is really, really well spent. How all of this is some matter of on open source? We'll see in a moment, okay? So um, while doing my PhD, I got into uh, Innovation Lab, whatever, I don't know if you know this program, Augusto Coppola, whatever, thank you. They taught me uh, one of these, this is one of the most important things they taught me, that delivery is as important as the content itself. So um, if you want to know about doing talks and presentations and improve your delivery genetically in an oral form or slide work, presentation then by, uh, presentation then, it by Guy, Guy Reynolds, that book, it's a Bible, okay? You should have a physical copy, don't buy the paper, buy the physical one. Thank you. So I got into open source, finally. During my PhD, I was doing a PhD, my PhD in the Internet of Things, discovered this protocol about MQTTJ, yes. That was what I started contributing to. This process was not done by myself. I'm being famous for this, but I didn't have wrote it the first version. Uh, I just started contributing it, iterating, by the way, but I did the logo. Do you like the logo? <laughs> Fantastic. So um, I did the logo. So I started contributing to this, and at the very end, I ended up rewriting it, more or less, but uh, now this thing has been used by uh, IBM, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, maybe so al uh, also the others, but I don't want, I think Google as well, but I don't want to say something that I don't know for certain. So in 2013, in fact, I, got, I understood that also people matters a little bit. No, it happens much. And in fact, uh, in 2013, I went to the DERI, Digital Enterprise Research Institute in, um, in Ireland. And that will have a big impact in my life. We'll see that in a moment. I don't know, maybe you know about me and whatever, you already know. Uh, I was, went to DERI, this was a university, I went there visiting. How, do they, how did I get there? Because of my old boss at the previous job, at my first job. That was how I, did, how I, how I got there. So, I don't know, people matter. Also, in 2013, I delivered, I was that really delivered some of talks at the conference, but I did this one at this conference. First time at this conference, 2013, speaking about operational transformation. Um, to recognize what you have seen today, there was Phil that was talking about database synchronizations between the front end and the browser, and one of the techniques to use is operational transformation. Anyway, very nice talk. I did a demo, nice demo. Didn't work more very much, but whatever. Um, I had a nice question at the end of it. Why it was not open source? That was the question. Now, what, what are my answers to this question? First answer, why I regret open source something? Now, now, if you have a laptop, check this out. All those links, okay? This is my graveyard of stuff that, well, first thing makes absolute no sense. It's a library to convert, uh, to do internationalization, written in CoffeeScript. First one. Second one, d3.gen, it, do it doesn't even have a readme or anything in it. I don't think it even works. And the third one, I wrote as a synchronous, a library like async, but called Kanban. Why? <laughs> Whatever, okay? So, I don't know. I didn't have a good time with open source at that point. You <laughs> see what I brought on. <laughs> didn't have a good time. However, when, when I was visiting in Derry, I uh, read a nice paper, okay? And I said to myself, opened up my editor, coded it a full night, like 5 a.m. in the morning, and I wrote Level Graph. Level Graph, it's a nice little database for, um, uh, that sits on top on uh, Level Up, Level DB. You probably heard about the Level Up community. We'll talk a lot about the Level Up community more forward. But um, Level Graph does that in create a, from a key value store, 
it allows you to generate a, a graph database. So it's quite nice. Uh, so I tweeted about the people in the level community of what I've done. And I tweeted a friend of mine. I, I tweeted, uh, well, what now is a friend of mine, but I tweeted uh, Rodvag and Dominic, Dominic Tarr. Do you know who Dominic Tarr is? Let me shame a little bit. Do you know who Dominic Tarr is? If you do not know who Dominic Tarr is, look him up on NPM. He was one of the first pioneers in the Node community that wrote a lot of modules. And what are the basis of what we are using right now? Like uh, some of his modules are, are being downloaded like 20, 30 million times a month. Um, anyway, look it up. So uh, at that point, it was worked for a company in Ireland. And that company was in, uh, was in Tramor. And by tweeting, they invited me for, for dinner at this exact place. Okay? And most of the company was sitting at that table, plus another one. There were eight people in that room. Okay? Um, so I went down there. By the way, it's a very nice restaurant. They do a fantastic surf and turf. If you go down there, pass by Tramore, go there. Um, so uh, in 2013, I also worked on my MQTT broker, Mosca. And uh, the same company uh, invited me to present at um, NotConf EU 2013, a conference in a castle on an island. I said everything. This is probably my most popular video on YouTube. 30,000 visualization, whatever. Um, it's a very nice video. Um, so, well, at that point, people started to talk to me about this stuff. My project started to get some traction. And, well, the company, Nearform, asked me to work with them. Um, so I started working with Nearform well before finishing off my PhD. Okay? Really? Okay. That was what happened. Um, I finished off my PhD and I was working with them. And one of the things I did was doing this thing called Graft. Have you ever heard about Graph? Probably not. That's a good thing. This was mad science, purely mad science. And um, I only myself could fit bugs there. We didn't get any traction. Now, I wrote the thing in a way that is easy to maintain, but whatever. Um, so. Um, now, I was talking about conferences and so on, and I went out to CodeMotion, to my friends. Uh, I did this nice talk. I also did it at Better Software. Um, it was a nice talk about working remotely and how great it is. Please work remotely if you can. Um, so in 2015, I also was going to London. I was working in one of those buildings, not the tall one. <laughs> um, I was going there every other week. So on one week was in London, one week was in Italy for three three days in London, then the rest of the time in Italy. Every other week, plus conferences, plus everything. So while I liked London, I liked those, that project. I shipped a very nice thing. This is a nice case study. By the way, this building is this one, okay? This was the building. And it, there's a nice case study on our website about our, my work on News UK. I also went to um, uh, Node.js Interactive 2015, doing this talk, reaching ludicrous speed. I released this library called Steed. Nobody used it. I just, it's my library like async. It's just twice as fast. So if you want to use it, it's still there, working fine and maintaining it. Um, it's really good. Uh, uh, now, I opened a, a PR against the, the, the Bluebird. How many of you like Bluebird? Somebody. Anyway, I opened a PR against Bluebird that does this, all these nice benchmarks, saying, well, you know, you should benchmark this one, not this, not async, because this one is faster. Never accepted. At that conference, though, I had some, I don't know, done some work on, on core, on not core, um, and they gave me the commitment, okay, and on not core. This was a very fun, great moment for me. So now I was, like, they merged it. My friend Colin did it. So, again, 2016, kept going to London, okay. Um, I also, uh, in 2015, it was a great year, very productive year. I also made a mess at a conference. I'm not naming the talk because I don't want to shame myself too much. I read it that, that a little bit. Um, so um, in 2016, um, I released my library, Pino. This was, everybody loves Pino. Been mentioned a couple of times already. Hey! I also released a bunch of other stuff that probably you're using, probably you're not using, which I, they helped me develop Pino, helped us develop Pino. One is 0x. 
and the other one is Autocannon. Um, Zero-X is a library for flame graphs. So, um, yeah, you run your server, then oh, this is Autocannon. So you can run Autocannon, and you can use to benchmark your server. It's also used by NodeCore. Um, and you generate, blah, blah, whatever. Too much, too long. And then we can also generate a flame graph. A flame graph is a nice thing that shows where your application is spending a lot of time. Uh, it generates, takes a while. By the way, if there are any good D3 developers or WebGL that wants to work on this, I have a lot of ideas. This is the flame graph, OK? The darker one are the points where it spends a lot of time. Um, so I did this also this nice talk with my friend David. Uh, it's really nice. Go look at it. It's really cool. Um, well, now, today, now, more or less, I am maintaining more than 240 modules. And I have a problem. If I make a mistake in some of those, I got slapped in less than five minutes. I tried that. Like, I, did, I botched some release along the way. Um, how many of you use Yarn? OK, I broke it once. <laughs> Actually, not once, twice. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry, I can't. Um, for you at if you are at Facebook, whatever, I can send you the link to the things and, you know, whatever. Um, what did I learn in all of this? So first of all, if your project has too many moving parts, it's impossible to maintain and move forward. This is a very important takeaway. And let me make an example of my MQTT broker. Now, MQTT broker supports two versions of MQTT, 3.1 and 3.1.1. Um, it uh, supports quali two quality levels of quality of services, zero and one. It uh, supports MongoDB, LevelDB, uh, Redis as storage. It supports uh, uh, Kafka, ThermQ, and FS for actually exchanging the information between the process and scaling it. And it's, use it's usable inside any other Node.js applications, and also from the command line. OK? Well, that's what it is. OK? Um, so Mosca has uh, 32 direct dependencies. Not so much, 32. But 314 direct dependencies in production. It's massive. Okay? And you can use this inside your own application okay, as a module. So imagine what. So um, it also has Docker images, so I'm man also maintaining Docker images for x86 and ARM. And all of this with one committer, myself. And because of all of this, I got only 7,000 downloads per month. You can guess why. It's really hard to maintain this. It's really hard to fix bugs. It's really hard to help people, OK? And in fact, it also has no docs, more or less. So. Um, so one thing that I learned, I did this early on in 2013, one thing I learned afterwards is that having other committer is key to open source success. So uh, I was very lucky that I was b being made a member of the Level Up Level community, which is defined as open open source. What open open source means, it means that individuals making significant and valuable contributions are given commit access to the project. Now, this is very important. This is a way, if somebody gives you, send you a good PR, if they, if they see a way to become a contributor to the project, to onboard them, then you can grow from just a single person that is just firing off a pull request to somebody that can help maintain your work. This is critical for open source success. We can't do this thing alone. It's too much work, okay? We need other people that can help us, that can remove our biases, that can call us out if we made a mistake, and that can review our work. So also, Red Rod Vag that came up with this thing, I need to thank you, uh, thank him as much as I could uh, for paving the way. This has come from the uh, contributing.md from the Node.js project, and I would like to point out to this phrase, if you make a significant contribution, and um, it's like individuals identified by the CC as making significant and valuable contribution are made as collaborators and given commit access to the project. 
So the, the way Node.js works right now and the way the, develop the various collaborators and contributors works with the project is fundamentally based on what it was experimented in the level community in 2013. So, well, so I made some success, I had modules. I receive like a couple of those every month. Make a variation on it. Uh, I failed my exam, my job, my family is ruined. If you don't, if you're not reading, whatever, if you do not help me, I would lose my job. Um, I don't know, this is very, the, the first time I received one of those, I was in, I got in a cri half a crisis. What should I do? Should I spend my Sunday to fix this bug or should I stay with my family? Should I stay with somebody that I love? I had no time to do it during my work day, okay? It was very, very hard for me at that point in time. And I just wanted to put myself in my little hole and disappear because it was not nice. I didn't feel nice at that point. It was horrible. Uh, because what should I do? Like, I, I was, I had so much, I was so sad that I couldn't help those people. Okay, and, but I didn't have time to. So I got more and more depressed, even less productive, and had even less time to do open source. That's what open source burnout is. Um, that point, maybe coding was not really fun anymore, coding for open source. Coding for work, yeah, fine, yeah, making money. But open source, maybe not so much. Um, also, what was your pride was left unattended and you feel even more depressed. That's life. You need to make some sense out of it. You got, you got out, I don't know. I'm fine now, so. Anyway, um, the big question also is um, how to be a good citizen in, in open source. How can you be a good citizen in open source? and avoid those situations where people like go, uh, are not feeli feeling very well afterwards. So, um, well, first of all, if help, 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 okay? If you're using some open source library, modules, whatever that you like, help them maintaining your pro the project, okay? Uh, there's a lot of forms of help, like you can contribute docs, you can contribute um, help newbies, help the ma ma manage the issue tracker. Managing the issue tracker takes a lot of work. Okay, like just answering to questions. A lot of people open an issue, but it's not an issue, it's how it works, so whatever. So the second thing is give back. If you're done, like if your company lives on top of open source. Okay, um, so how many of you use any open source here? So, how many things have you contributed back to the community? Yeah, look, at, look around people. Um, so um, if your company lives on open source, you should give back. It's not self-maintaining. It's not self-sustaining. It requires a lot of work. So do it. Um, help the author of that module you love, okay? Uh, or maybe just throw some money at him. A lot of people are just freelancers or something like that. Just throw some money at them, literally, in a very literal sense, okay? Bag of cash, yeah. Uh, they need support. This is very important. I don't know how many of you have cried of support on uh, open source modules. I did, but do not expect a bug fix, okay? It's not my responsibility. That's how I got out of my hole. It's not my responsibility to fix all the bugs you, that, are, that are there. Th there is some responsibility to try. I should try. I really want to, but it's not my responsibility, okay? Uh, there is a nice poll from Aaron Hammer about this. Read it, it has some very strong language, so you know, if you know Aaron Hammer, author of Oath, Happy JS, and other things, it's very opinionated, but this is true. Do not expect that. But if I had to, if I had to, if I had the responsibility to address all the issues that are open, I wouldn't have a life. Okay, and I will be very, very depressed. Now we have a picture moment. Fantastic. <laughs> they will be published somewhere. So um, anyway, um, so if you want to, to help people, what you do, you submit a pull request. Okay, that's the basic form. Open a pull request. Fix some things. 
Now, by the way, this is the best, also it's also the best way ever to improve your coding skills. You contribute to open source, but not because, well, why you should contribute to improve my coding skills if I can just code for work or whatever? Well, there is a catch, because you can have reviewers in the community. So if your people, your person around, you want some to help, you want to learn and upskill yourself. You c if and if you work with some very, you send a, a pull request to, to some very talented people, they will review your code. And they will check what's wrong with it and tell you how to improve it, how to, how to improve it and you will learn in the process. It's a fantastic way to learn and get better as developers. Now there is step three, which is follow up and fix your stuff. So if a reviewer took your their time to write to send you a review, you need to take your time and do what they asked you to do. Otherwise, we are losing time for everybody. Finally, your thing gets merged. Okay, hey! So, um, anyway, if you're using open source, you need to live by this rule. You are the last maintainer, okay? For everything you use. Well, yeah, that's more or less how I live it, okay? So you need to know what's going on in there. Um, I don't know, I'm running out of time, but I will be going on until I finish. <laughs> um, thank you, folks. So the journey, the journey that of, of this, this journey is, uh, is amazing. And mm, I loved it. I made this picture some weeks ago. Uh, it's been fantastic so far. I, I really love what open source has given me, and I hope I give something to you on to learn from my mistakes in the open source community. So now in 2017, I help companies uh, in that tall building deliver amazing technology, okay? Uh, from Forli, Italy. Okay? So in 2017, Pino, my logger, has uh, 50,000 alone per month and 120 dependents, only seven direct dependencies, and 26 indirect dependencies in production, okay? And more importantly, I have four other fantastic committers to my open source project. And I want to thank uh, James, David, and Thomas to help me out on this. <laughs> and I also want to thank everybody else that is working on the ecosystem, uh, Josh, Irina, and everybody that is using it and making it popular. Okay, you should use Pinot Collard, it's way better than Pinot for printing your locks. Um, so, um, apart from all of this, I got recently nominated uh, by to the Node.js uh, CTC. I don't know if you know what the structure of the Node.js Foundation. The CTC has the final authority uh, over Node.js. So, and uh, apart from all of what it ever does, it does one key important thing for me. It's maintaining the list of additional collaborators. Okay, and in fact, going back to what was what I showed you before, if you make a if you make a significant contribution and are not considered for commit access, log an issue or contact a CTC member directly. So the full thing, the key point about open source is collaborating and keep and keep going. Okay, the project survives you. If you've done something of work, survives your work. So your work should survive yourself, maintained by somebody else. So the big question is why I've done all of this and why you maybe you should or you should not. <laughs> so at CodeMotion, somebody told me this thing. They thanked me about I changed li their lives and now they were happy and before they were depressed. Um, another guy, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, told me uh, we did a, a webinar together on streams. You should watch it, by the way. Really cool if you want to learn about Node.js streams. And thank you for introducing me to Split2. I don't know if you know Split2 is one of my popular op open source projects. Everybody should use Split2. We can enter why Split2 and not Split1, but whatever. Uh, split was done, Split1, Split was done by Dominic Tarr. <laughs> Just to close the circle. So, um, by the way, I was being able to meet the most awesome people along the, uh, in all this journey. It's fantastic. Also, um, going back to my original point, I do not, really do not have to prove anybody anymore that I can deliver software. So, 
this is something for me. I don't know if it might be something for you or not. Um, also, with great powers comes great responsibility. <laughs> so I can break your application in a very direct sense if I make a mistake. Yeah, pretty hard. If you're using any, you are pro check out your application, your tree, check out how many instances of readable stream you have in your thing, and you can you probably will notice or split two or some other of my modules. It's probably there. Something that I maintain is probably there. Um, so uh, I work with this company called Nearform. We are an international OJS consultancy company. We are throughout the, um, we work throughout, uh, 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 throughout Europe, the US. We have people also in South Africa, whatever. We are remote. We are adding more or less along all the spectrum of, of all the different layers back and forth. Uh, we also have a cook, if you want to move to Ireland, we have a cook at HQ. We are so remote that people come to the office for lunch. <laughs> okay, um, you can email me directly on go to nearphone.com slash careers. And I would like to, th like to thank you. <laughs> One more thing, I actually want to thank everybody that helped me come come to this place at this point. Thank you, Ben. <laughs>